What it do peeps, it's your boys working from Top Physique back again with another woo video guys and today we are going to be hanging out but I'm also going to share some information with you guys about how to lose that stubborn <laughs> belly fat while using intermittent fasting. So if you guys are ready, let's begin. So before we begin the video, I just want to first say, oh, hold up a second, you guys are kind of far away. Cool, much better. So I just want to say that I hit a new low weight in of 190.6. So that is the lowest I've been since I started this prep. Woo! Feels good, man. To be honest, you guys, I was kind of scared because for a while there, I hit a plateau where my waist wasn't really moving. I just dropped my calories a little bit just by like 200 across the board, but even after I did that, I still wasn't seeing much changes. But I just stuck with the plan, and all of a sudden, boom, the weight went down. And then it shows you fat loss is not linear. Sometimes it goes start to stop. But this video is not about that. This video is about losing that stubborn belly fat. So just to give you guys a heads up, this video is gonna start with very simple concepts. And then as we go further into the video, I'm gonna get a little bit more advanced. Plus, I'm going to be on the go today, so we're not gonna be in the same position. I have a lot of stuff to do. And Okay guys, so I'm on my way over to the gym right now because I have to go work out with some of my friends. So today is gonna be a leg and back workout if I can remember correctly. But before I go over there, let's talk a little bit about how to lose stubborn body fat. So the stubborn belly fat is actually a function of your body fat percentage. So the higher your body fat percentage, the more fat you're gonna have around your stomach. The only way you can get rid of that belly fat is to lose even more fat. The magical number is 10%. Once you reach 10% body fat, it is impossible. You are not going to have any fat on your stomach. It's going to be pretty much poo, flat washboard. Now, 10% is where you get that classic six-pack beach body look. So if you're trying to get rid of that belly fat, first step is trying to get down to 10% body fat. All right, guys, we are on the run right now. We really need to go. So... What's up? So this is homie number one. What's up, what's up? Yo, cool. Yo, this is homie number two. What up, bro? What's up, buddy? Yeah. All right, so I'm hanging out with these dudes over here. And then uh, Sasha showed me something that's very interesting. This is why I'm not a big fan of supplements. All right, so there's usually like a thing where we talk about like it's fillers and stuff. So I got some tyrosine, like got the store brand, right? Yeah. And then one pill's okay, but this one, I don't know if there's any. Well, bro, I think we can definitely agree that there are no filler ingredients in this uh, <laughs> capsule right here. Absolutely no filler. Oh. No filler. They're being real about that. Yeah. <laughs> so we're about to hit a leg and back workout. But before we do this, I want to talk some more about uh, the body fat percent thing. Now that I'm telling you that to get rid of the stubborn belly fat, you need to be at 10%. You might be like, well, how the hell did I get to 10% in the first place? Well, guys, it's pretty simple. There are three things that you need to be able to do to get down to 10%. The first thing you need to do when it comes to getting below 10% body fat, you need to make sure that you're in a caloric deficit. I talk about this all the time on my channel. You need to eat less food than your body burns in order to actually lose body fat. So when it comes to getting to 10%, I always recommend people to kind of shoot for a weight loss of around one to 1.5 pounds per week. That is fast enough that you can lose fat and it's also slow enough that you don't risk losing any muscle mass. So as you guys know, I am doing intermittent fasting, but uh, that is not the only way for you to lose weight. You have to make sure you're in a caloric deficit, even though you are doing intermittent fasting in order to burn body fat. So, what I use to be able to figure out how many calories you need to burn body fat is, for guys, I just actually use a simple formula. I would just do your body weight 
times 10 to 12. Now, if you're very active, do body weight times 12. And if you're not very active, do body weight times 10. This will give you a very good start and then you can adjust your calories as the weeks go by to make sure that you're using the correct amount of weight. So I know a lot of you guys will be talking about the calories that give you a simple formula of 10 to 12. And some people might be like, how about those like complicated formulas they can find online? It's like guys, there's really no accurate way to figure out how many calories you need to burn fat. The best way is just to have a number that you start with and then when you monitor your progress, after a few weeks, you can now tell if that's working for you or not. And then if it is working, you stick to it. And if it's not, you adjust. It's pretty simple. So after you set your calorie requirements and you're losing about 1 to 1.5 pounds per week, the next thing you need to really focus on is your protein intake because protein is extremely important when it comes to being able to retain lean body mass when you're in your cut. So I usually recommend people to have about 1 gram to about 1.4 grams per pound of lean body mass. This is enough to be able to help you retain muscle mass while you're cut and you might actually be able to improve your strength while you're in your deficit with that kind of intake. done but I still have one more tip for you guys when it comes to being able to get down to 10% body fat so we talked about nutrition that you need to make sure you're in a caloric deficit you need to make sure that you're eating enough protein then the third thing is you need to make sure that you're working out heavy so when you're doing your workouts you still want to make sure that you're lifting heavy weights you don't want your strength to go down because strength is a very good indicator of muscle mass so if your strength is going down while you're in a cut that means that you're probably losing muscle mass and it's going to be a lot harder for you to get those six pack abs and that flat stomach so now it's time for us to get our first meal it is currently 310 so guys i'll catch you at the Every time I come to a for local, I always get the same damn thing, man. I always get the chicken breast, the two wings, and the churros. So I'm gonna put the macros of this meal right here. I've noticed in my YouTube comments, a lot of you guys keep asking me about, you know, meal timing and time stamping all my meals. When it comes to intermittent fasting, your schedule is not really that important. Like intermittent fasting, you're just supposed to kind of like free you from being in a rigid schedule. You need to eat what is most convenient for you, what fits your schedule. Meal timing is extremely irrelevant when it comes to your fitness. What matters most is that you make sure that you hit your calorie and protein goals at the end of the day. That is the most important thing when it comes to fat loss or muscle gain or anything when it comes to fitness. So anyways guys, I'm gonna enjoy this thing right here and then actually I also have to do a client check-in somewhere else. So I need to eat this really quick and I need to go find somewhere that has some Wi-Fi. So we went to Coffee Bean to go do some of my online client check-ins because they had free Wi-Fi over there. Man, what is better than free Wi-Fi? Nothing. Nothing, man. Actually, I know what's better than free Wi-Fi. Some good coffee. Now, you guys have been clowning on me about my instant coffee because I always drink instant coffee in the beginning of all my videos. And you guys keep telling me that it is terrible, that it's horrible. You know what, guys? You're right. Instant coffee is pretty bad. I can't lie to you. But your boy is balling now. So, haha, <laughs> I've moved on up. I want you guys to know one of my dreams, man. My dream is to one day be able to drive a Lamborghini while still drinking some instant coffee. Just dicking around. 
after doing my online client check-ins I do have to train some clients in person and then after that I'm gonna have my second meal of the day so my second meal is gonna be my last meal and then during that meal I'm gonna talk about some more complicated stuff about how to actually get rid of that stubborn body fat so I guess I'll catch you guys at meal number two right meal number two so we'll be there in three two and Alright guys, just like we do for every single Tao Physique video, we are going to end this on the dinner table. I have some chicken with some Alfredo sauce and I have uh, this thing called Butternut Squash Triangoli. Oh god guys, this stuff is amazing. If you have a Trader Joe's in your area, you definitely need to try that stuff. It is bombs. And then to round it off so that I can hit my protein intake, I'm going to have two scoops of protein. So before I actually end up eating all this stuff, let me put this stuff away and let's talk more about stubborn body fat and how you can lose it, especially the stuff around your belly. Now we're going to go all geeky and we're going to go all sciency right now. Science rules. So we are going to need a whiteboard. So when it comes to stubborn fat, there are two types of fat receptors. You have your beta 2 receptors, beta as in being a little beta. We also have your alpha 2 receptors, alpha as in being king of the jungle, you know, top dog, whatever. We have beta and then we have alpha 2. Your beta 2 fat receptors, these are receptors that they kind of like, think of it as an accelerator. When you have body parts that are very high in beta 2 receptors, these tend to be the easiest kind of fat to burn. So think about fat that's in your, your shoulders, your, your biceps, those are very easy. Just being in a simple characteristic can get rid of that stuff, right? But the alpha 2 receptors, these are very similar to brakes. So these actually slow down fat burning. So if you have any body parts that are very high in the alpha 2 receptors, these are going to be very stubborn. It's going to be very hard to burn off. So usually your abs, your love handles, and your lower back for guys are very high in alpha 2. And for women, your butt, your hips, your thighs are also very high in alpha 2. What we need to do if you're trying to get rid of that stubborn body fat in your, in your belly or wherever is we need to find a way to turn these off, right? So the way you can turn off alpha 2 receptors is number one by uh, using a low carb diet. I'm sure if you guys are very into like, you know, the YouTube fitness space, you've probably seen keto has become extremely popular right now. And that is because Keto is obviously you're very low in carbs and when you are low in carbs for a good amount of time about two to three days That's when you start to inhibit alpha 2 receptors, right? So low carb diets are very good for burning that stubborn fat, but low carb diets they suck Let's be honest man. I mean keto. I know it's very popular, but in my opinion keto is not very um, How can I say this? It is not very sustainable. A lot of people cannot do keto for the rest of their life. Like, let's be real, guys. I think we all like carbs. And if I tell you that you can never eat carbs again just so you can have a six pack, I'm sure you'll be pretty depressed. Now, another way you can actually inhibit those alpha 2 receptors is by reducing your insulin. And one fancy trick you can do is use in a minute fasting oh guys i apologize for my horrible handwriting now with in a minute fasting when you fast for about 12 to 16 hours you tend to actually have very low insulin levels and if you increase the activity in that time range you're actually more likely to burn that stubborn fat because insulin is low then and then when you increase the activity you're more likely to tap in to those stubborn fat areas 
Now, this is probably where things like fasted cardio came into place. Like, if you guys are really into bodybuilding, fasted cardio was hailed to be the best thing for getting you stage ready. And that's probably why that is, because cardio fasted actually was able to get you into those alpha 2 receptors and make sure that you can burn off those love handles and those stubborn areas. So, those Asian bodybuilders, they were kind of right about doing uh, fasted cardio. But the thing about that is you don't need to do fasted cardio anymore. As long as you do intermittent fasting, you can just do your daily activities and that alone is going to be able to help you burn off that stubborn fat. Also, another reason why intermittent fasting is great at helping you with uh, those alpha 2 receptors is because of blood flow. So in order to inhibit these receptors, you need a lot of blood flow in the region. Things like your love handles and your lower abs or your butts or your hips or your thighs, these tend not to get a lot of blood flow in that region. But this is what intermittent fasting does. Intermittent fasting actually tends to pull a lot of blood flow into your core regions. So when you do intermittent fasting, you're hitting these alpha 2 receptors through so many angles. One, you're hitting it through uh, reducing your insulin levels. Two, you're hitting it through increased blood flow in those regions that are very stubborn. And three, you're hitting it through, oh, I don't know what three is. Hmm, I guess the only two. Oh, well. So, guys, that was the video. Hopefully, you guys found this video informative or entertaining or whatever. So, if you guys like this content, you know what to do. Go ahead and give it a woo, thumbs up. And if you haven't subscribed to the channel, man, go ahead and subscribe already because you know it is cool up in here. And for all my fellas, don't forget who we do it for, guys.